NASA's unexplained fouls, curse of the full moon. That's a mission to explore the unknown. What we know about the universe is a tiny refraction of what's actually out there. In search of the answers, it launches its scientists to space, its craft beyond the limits of the solar system. We have no idea what's out there. There might be dangers lurking in the darkness. We can, can, run, can run across some mysteries than discoveries. What we run across more mysteries than discoveries. We don't know what is going to throw up next. The deadly Nazi speaker at the doomed of Hindenburg. I know there's something more to this story. It's just the hydrogen exploded. Mysterious scientific readings linked to the full moon. Many science experiments have been done to see the link between the full moon and strange phenomena. Scientists doing real research is coming back with something strange. And could planet Earth have a secret twin? Be amazing, be amazing if there is other people out there on another planet that were just hidden from view. These are NASA's unexplained files. Soviet space ship comes courageously close to fatal collision. The crew in trouble is unable to dock the space station. It's going down. Reentry goes very wrong. They are about to enter the whole world of pain, drowning, freezing, situation. Take your pick. October 1976. Sonics 23. Carrying cosmonauts. Yeah, ask you have Zododov and Valerie Gros des Tenderskiff to the orbiting Skidlet Five versus military outposts. Sodovitz twenty three spacecraft prepared to man is military equipment, mostly very powerful cameras used for military surveillance of strategy strategically important objects. Cosmos are spies working for Elmer's United States. The Soviet Union's Black Ops program runs to the U.S. for space. Bad weather puts them, of course, of 500 meters away for Server 5 stage station. They look like they're going to crash into the wrong side of it. So X has a, fi- a very a limited amount of fuel. Just, over just seconds until impact. Zoldov and Rekrotiski have no option but to bolt. They're right outside the Soviet 5 space station. But they try to dock again. They won't have enough fuel to get home. They can't use all their fuel up to be stuck in orbit. They're just, they'd be just a slow death. Back on the mission control. The fight the directors realize the only option left is to try to bring the guys home. The crews prepare for it and scheduled re-entry. Well, they think that's the worst part of the mission. It turns out it's just beginning. The cosmos plummet it back into the atmosphere. It's nightmare on Earth, time on Earth. The weather conditions are on the ground are worsened. They're also the way off they're also way off course. So in the seven twenty three has got to get back to the Earth as unexpected. This means it will not land in the region where they're supposed to land. The Solix twenty three is supposed to land on the Kiss of Kistepi, a dry plane bigger than the state of the Texas. But to their horror they realise that a touchdown becomes splashdown. They hit the only 20 mile lake, wild lake in the middle of the desert. They are about to enter a whole new world, a whole world of pain. So it's a land in the middle of the 10 degree lake. It's pitch black outside. Snow is coming. A lake is covered half snow, half ice, half water. It's almost like a frozen, hell of frozen swamp. Emergency radio beacon guides the rescue to location. But as the weather closes in, emergency response team struggles to find a spacecraft in the dark. Research rescue crew is heading for the emergency landing spot. They can't see a capsule. They don't know where it's landed. The first helicopter which arrives on the site actually overflies the site, and then they have to fly back. But once they activate the searchlight, it reflects from the heavy, heavy snow which has fallen, so they do not see the surface of the lake. A parachute attached to the module feels the water dragging the capsule on its side and pulling the cosmos escape hatch beneath, beneath the surface. If, if they open the hatch, they're down, drown. If they stay inside, they suffocate, drowning the physication. There's not much of a choice. The helicopter finally locates the stricken stoglerths of the cosmos results. We have heard the helicopter overhead. Overhead, 
but he would have, they, but they would have realized that help was at hand. But the recovery team was not prepared for water rescue. Some of their crucial equipment for water recovery is missing because of course nobody expected to end up in the lake. The water is so bad they cannot land on the lake. The rescue crews take make radio contact. They discover two men still alive, but in bad shape. The voices are changing. Their breathing is getting heavier. It's a sudden sign they are suffering from carbon and dioxide poisoning. The own breath is killing him. Without proper equipment, it forced a delayed operation. They have postponed the rescue operations. Try again hours later at dawn. No idea whether the cosmos will live for the night. The cosmos slip deeper into danger. Deep, deep, deep into danger. Another drama which is still developing on the spacecraft itself because it also water seep, starts seeping into the different sensors. And one of the sensors att- activates backup parachute. Parachute deploys into water, of course, filled with water. They realize the water rushes into the spacecraft. They will drown immediately. Inside the spacecraft, the temperature is dropping dangerously. Even though they are wearing spacesuits, suits, at least soon the cosmos will are in serious risk of freezing to death. At minus seven degrees Fahrenheit, the space in the air spacecraft drifts and frozen in the lake for more than ten hours. Ice crystals etched. As you form the internal walls of the capsule, the crew gets really cold. At first light, the rescue company got to, to turns. They limited. They have limited time. They could stay alive in this situation, as they have has to be rescued very quickly. This time, when the rescue is ready in the rescue, there is there's no response. The signal's dead. The rescue team, their fears are worse. But still, their brave and strange conditions recover the stroll and trigger the capsule. In order to stage this daring rescue, a diver had to lower himself down to the cave down on the cable, reach the curse of, reach for the capsule, hook it up to the helicopter, basically no life in the process. And the helicopter dies in and perhaps d- tries to lift up the capsule out of the water. Maybe he's lying and cannot do it. They try to lift the capsule, the weight would bring the helicopter crashing to the icy lake. There's only one other option, to pull the hel- capsule to shore. They have to drag, literally tow this capsule to the edge of the lake, a 45 minute journey. And all this time the parachute is dragging it, causing extra stress and load on the helicopter. It is completely untested and dangerous and what a mover. When it beats the capsule on the wooden shore of the lake, rescuers open a hatch. They see inside, what they see inside confirm, appears to confirm all their worst fears. Whole, the full extent of cosmos. I well, fully expect the cosmonauts be dead. Hey, when they open the capsule, they, that's it, it's over. The rest of us think they're just trying to recover the bodies now. More than ten hours after the disastrous emergency flat down, the icy waters rushing, the rescue crews are pulled, the stricken its capsule on the nearest boat shore. Inside the frozen capsule, the two cosmonauts were not moving. One of them... One of them breathes, while the other, against all the others, the two cosmos are alive. One of them is already conscious, and the other only can breathe. He is hushed up to vent it, so the humiliation, when the Russians gave the reports of the NASA, by stress of landing safely. Events like the 23 near disasters were hushed, pushed out. The whole Soviet Union declaration was false. It's not until again, oh, cosmos, a full decade, Later, the few nations of the Laden mission revealed Zedov and Rudolfov were able, were the victims of a very fraud system, were trying to compete in space with an incredible equipment resources. So, this 23 mission is probably one of the most unappreciated, a little known cases of the home in space flight history, where crew came very close to losing their lives. They came to cope with all those situations. Pretty much, they had to, to prove prize. Every step away, a pride of Nazi Germany erupts in flames. It's a MERS major aviation disaster. Filtered on film, it's horrifying. Reduce a twisted mess of metal in just a few minute, seconds. In mere seconds, a 28-year-old woman of mystery, of or mystery, they've been solved. No one can read exactly where the fire started and why. What the cause a little bit of it still remains explained. To NASA scientists, a lots of gravity secret known only to NASA, Nazis. I knew there's something new, more than a story than that just hydro exploded. How you can burn the airship 
It's so case of German gen- Nazi engineering, precious destination, Lakehurst, Naval Base, Air Station, New Jersey. Hindenburg comes in and it's circling in the field, changes its bows. And you see them dropping the landing lines. A crew on the ground grabbing a hold of them. And as the crew begin landing procedure, the rear of Hindenburg suddenly bursts into flame, erupts in flames. Get this, Charlie. It's crashing, it's crashing terribly. Wait a minute, the whole airship is right. Oh, get out of the way, please. It's burning into flames, busting into flames. And it's falling on the mooring, the house. And folks agree, this is terrible. It's one of the most catastrophes, worst catastrophes in the world. 37 pressures are trapped beneath the inferno. Cameras capture the whole, the entire event. Ladies and gentlemen, the smoke and its flames now. All humanity is the first Major Aviation disaster catch on the film. It's horrifying. If Enderberg is over four times the length of 4747, it was reduced to a twisted mass of metal. Just mere seconds. Disaster blowed a growing reputation of Nazi engineering. Hindenburg was a prime and joy of Nazi Germany. They lose this airship was, lost this airship was a huge embarrassment. Investigators immediately expect sabotage. This is 1937. The anti-Nazi settlement, settlement. In the U.S. is already running high, but whatever, but what be the the make of highly visible attack on the Nazi immigrants when they strike at the great great French at the fate of flagship. The FBI shows over the case, but the investigators draw the bank. No great evidence to support the sabotage theory. I hear say speculation. So precise cause accident. Remains a mystery. For 30 years, researchers had assumed Kosefic was caused by hydrogen leak. But when the NASA rocket scientists and hydrogen expert Anderson bade raise the reports, he's not convinced. I knew there was something there more to this history. Just hydrogen exploded. And here's more what prompted me to start investigating. Bain once headed I did a program at NASA with steps of work for Apollo and other space missions. He examines the original Hindenburg investigating to the reports of night morning, first light, a naval inspection board. Search is still smoking, run ruins, possible clue that might yield a key mysterious disaster. He first examines the widely held belief that a hydrogen leak sparked the configurations. Hindenburg contained enough highly flammable hydrogen to fill Madison Square Garden, seven times over. In the 1930s, saplings ensured that explosive gas was protected inside an air skin tight skin. Fire requires fuel, oxygen, a source of ignition. Everybody knows where oxygen came from, thinks they know where the fuel came from. I always support suggest that where he landed hydrogen was leaking from the craft. Zeppelin was listing. One witness had claimed to see a cover fluttering as if a gas was rising. The conclusion seemed straightforward. One small spark a pressure ship became a fireball. The rallying theory is that one hydrogen gas cells united, causing train reaction and engulfed the entire Enderberg in flames. But Bain knows that oh I found a book. Flammable hydrogen will not ignite unless it's mixed with exactly the right amount of hydrogen. It's virtually impossible to happen by chance. You know the floor is primarily the hydrogen is so rich, it's not going to ignite until you get there where you have a good mix of hydrogen and air. You have to have the right mixture before it ignites. So that phrase actually has a, has a combination. It's very difficult to have that ignition occurring at the same time as far out it there that the ferry, ferry falls apart. Bain revisits the strange this art of footage. He really stuck by the speed of the fire.
which spreads at 45 feet, 50 meters per second. Something in the outer covering of the Hindenburg is highly flammable. The heart of skin in Hindenburg holds the key to the mystery. Something else is burning very rapidly around the airship. Bits of blackened fabric are still the remains of poor luxury in line, in airline to Hindenburg. Incredibly, Blaine is able to acquire a fragment of Hindenburg skin as a void of Vernon. He left subjects it, subjects it to the barrage of tests, so he took the samples of fabric and then we started testing the Cabrera Brandity. The makeup of the material with less, uh, less static material properties and all that. One thing started to get in jail is really what happened. To an untrained eye, the list of chemicals that coated the fabric seems unremarkable. And that is a fabric based structure of a dope or a combination of aluminium powder, iron oxide, wool, and accelerate chemicals. To an acidosis, a chemical cocktail is shocking. It resembles a compound called termine. Essentially used to fuel jet engines. This is nuts. The Nazis basically painted the Hindenburg in rocket fuel. Todd Anderson Bain, his team had discovered the Hindenburg was coated in substance resembling rocket fuel. As soon as this electrolytic spark was set the rapid procedure, precise chain reaction which lights the Hindenburg. Once the flames start, they spread rapidly. They heated by hydrogen. So the cell just, that really it's, so the cell just actually exploded. Just before Bain could get close, the book on the mystery, he had one final obstacle to overcome. There is a flaw here. Other airships have used the same coating, not burned up like Hindenburg. So why did Hindenburg go up like the fames as that and other weapons didn't? Bain believes that he has the answer when he uncovers something unusual. Reports the airship surviving crew. USS Naval Navy wanted me to come in in what they, what was called a high mooring, something like two hundred feet. Bain believes it was his final two mistake. A lower mooring of the Zeppelin drops a fifty feet conductive wire to the ground is charged, put up static electricity as you do two hundred feet. The amount of charge built up with wire access what it would have been at fifty feet. At 200 feet, the Hindenburg was moving, hovering too high to shed the potentially deadly static. Renewal increased the chance of a great spark. A result, kaboom, all ends in a matter of seconds. But Bain's theories have never had to convince everyone. Bain theories have a lot of flaws. One of the photos has been colorized, so it's impossible to tell what color the flames actually was. Two, lots of the other hydrogen ships have burned. Exactly, especially during World War, World War Two. The other case is lighting. Some in conspiracy theories also fit the U.S. Navy insists that the 200 mooring is deeply suspicious. So, whilst some believe that NASA scientists maybe solved one of the most enduring mysteries in the history of aviation, not everybody is convinced that he is right. Despite decades of analysis, it appears that we never, never know what happened on the tragic day. Scientists back bounce lasers from the moon. When the signal vanishes, the timing is uncanny. This piece of lazy signal appears consi- always coincides with the full moon. Ah, oh, could this curse of the full moon sound, of the full moon sounds like a, a crazy story? The scientific research really did find something weird. The full moon has long been a source of fascination and wonder, influencing human behaviour and inspiring folklore. We always have those legends, those mysteries of the moon when it's full, wolves howl, people come crazy, werewolves come out, more experiments are done to see the link between the full moon and the strange phenomena. No studies ever found a genuine link between the moon and the unusual behaviour until now. This time scientists are doing full research, real research, coming back. There's something strange. July 2005, astrologer Russett McMillan, a team at Patching Point Observatory, are making precise measurements of the distance of the moon. A team bounces their powerful lasers off of reflectors, directors, left on the lunar surface by three Apollo missions. It basically serves case bank 
Side banks, very small prisms that bounce back and leaves the symbol of the earth. The same angle when it comes at, in and out. But astrologers believe, begin to notice something very odd with the experiment. Roughly every four weeks, the reflected laser signal mysteriously disappears. So once a month, the moon is shining a laser, a moon, a signal driver drops drastically. It's really strange to shoot a laser, not see anything back. That's really odd, month after month. We're seeing the same thing happen. Strange is still the timing and the single loss. For some reason, this appearance of a laser signal coincides with a full moon. The question here is why? What's going on? What are we? That's what we want to figure out. Science is a practicing point. University is spoot. The signals bounce off the lunar reflectors. Mysteriously disappear during every full moon. Reflectors, retroflect reflectors, been sitting on the moon ever, over 40 years since Apollo 11 crew deposited the first one. Buzz Aldrin pulls his device and sits it down the ground and then made sure that he pointed at it very accurately back at Earth. The team suspects the problem could be due to a fault in the reflector panels. To test this idea, they bounce the lasers of panels attached to discarded Soviet lunar hardware. These reflectors still have the same problem. We see the same reduction of reflected light from the laser to the Russian rover. Mystery deepens. Could lunar dust be blocking their signals? The moon is dusty in variety place. The watch the astronauts are bouncing around on the moon. The dust is getting kicked up by a lunar rover. And their boots. The dust on the moon is extremely fine. It sticks to everything. It gets our suits dirty. We can't even dust it off. We are told NASA, when we got back, you're going to have to come up with a cleaning kit for the next mission. Lunar dust is created by meteors and asteroids that are consistently bombarding the moon. The impacts happen to the, on all, happen all the time on the moon, but also, uh, uh, other time, Equipment left on the surface, like these three reflectors, is going to get dusty from all the ends of these impacts. But the lunar dust furry has its own problem problems. It's dust. Why do we get the perfect lasers? Why do we not get a perfect laser signal for lunar reflectors? The entire rest of the month, dust will be there all the time. So it's got to be something else. Some commentators begin to wonder whether the moon, full moon itself, is something causing a change. For a long time, the full moon was seen at a very special time. When the scientists found that it wasn't receiving the signals back from reflectors, it kind, of, it kind of fell in line with the idea that it being something weird, the full moon. We get the word lunatic from the idea that the full moon drained powers. Guy ideas that you never come really go away. Once a month on Earth, the moon uh, with the sun face becomes completely bathed in sunlight, resulting in the full moon. Could it be possible that it's some sort of activity that occurs on the moon when it's ever under direct sunlight? Is it like a life form that remains dominant and dark? It would explain why a laser signal only appeared immediately, intermediately. It sounds fantastic, but it's not unheard of. And there are many forms of life that are dormant. They are interactive many, when they are in the cold and dark. Are they really come alive when it's direct sunlight, when there is heat? In 2009, biologists found dormant bacteria deep in a freezing environment in the Arctic. These microscopes because organisms came back to life and exposed to heat. Could something be happening on the moon as well? But scientists don't believe there are well web bugs on the moon. The moon has been dead for a long, long time. It's not going to be anything like that. Astrologers have left perplexed with no explanation for the full moon curse. Five years, the curse goes to plain until December 2010. Millions of teams shine their laser towards the full moon as it enters a total lunar eclipse. And uh, so the full moon surface of the moon is lit by the sun. It get, it's very hot. During the lunar skip, the Earth eclipse, the Earth moves directly between the moon and the sun. A planet blocks the sunlight reaching the moon.
as the earth's shadow passes across the moon, all of a sudden the temperature plummet, the sunlight goes away, and we see the signal from the red factors recover. The reflected laser beam light is coming back even stronger than normal. Could the source heat be behind the full moon's curse? So what disappeared to have actually discovered that these reflectors change their properties depending upon the temperature. In other words, they work differently when they are not they are hot versus when they are cold. The reflectors are made of a dozen of small prism prism phys- phys- Prisms. They are designed to return la- laser exactly the direction with which they come. However, during the full moon, intense sunlight causes them to warp slightly. Laser dust will heat up the sunlight and what warm the universe will to cause the reflections of the muddles so it may appear in multiple directions. There is and then there was these signals to kind of go rainy. Ancient traditions have been already dismissed the primitive superstitions. A sign of science is spooky than our imagination. There is actual scientific research. It really did find something weird. Come on, still to come, a secret world hiding behind the sun. It'd be amazing if there were other people out there on another planet that's just hidden from view. A pillars on fire and night in our atmosphere. But what are they? We don't know. Like two distant planets, they, they, they seek around the star. Appears that, they, they appears that around the star, there are two planets that occupy the same orbit. Could the same thing happen around our sun? It's amazing. There are other people out there, some other planet that would just occur just in view. Could our Earth have a twin? NASA scientists who have been out the reach of their own universe discovered KOI. Dash 703, a bizarre a distant solar system, orbiting planets, doing something extraordinary. They see what appears to be four planets. What's strange is that two of the planets are the exact same orbit. I have surely to believe a twin planet is a distant solar system that could be each window of our paths. In any parts of the solar system, we were planets all over, they were pl- all planets all over the globe place. It could be possible that we have been seeing, indeed, two planets sharing the same orbit around their star. It, open, it opens to the intriguing possibility it could still be a entire world permanently hidden from the sight of the, uh, uh, on the other side of the sun. A very appealing idea is a twin earth on the other side of the sun, perpetually hidden from our view. It's like the sun... It's like dance partners, not touching one another, but creating around the dance floor in synchronism. So they sweep around the star and same number of days, being visible to one another. Since the dawn of civilization, mankind is speculative, but distant, but anti twin. This observation brings to mind ideas, been a big been part of humans ever since early civilization. It brings up popular culture. And it's even shown up in science fiction films. Both scientists and authors have long speculated about lost worlds, fantastic orbits, or even doppelganger planet nearing our own. Although fantastic and stealth, twin hidden behind the moon, sun is specifically impossible. Scientifically possible to us today it sounds perhaps like a loopy idea. There is this kind of earth, but actually, it's actually with beaches and physics. It's actually been a modern scientist who propagated the hidden worlds in our solar system. Fascinating concept. It's amazing if there are other people out there, they have a planet. Just hidden from view, the twin earth could be completely shielded from the sight of the sun. The sun is too big and bright to form from our vantage point, a point here on earth. But you see a planet and its blind spot. And this, this blind spot is really big. So you can hide a spectacular body there. I mean, a planet could be as big as Jupiter and you still wouldn't see it. It makes us wonder whether we really rule out there it makes us wonder whether we really rule out whether there's something there is really mysterious. In 2006, NASA launched a mission to investigate the sun, which proved this to prove the two Earth very once and for all better with spacecraft, better spacecraft with stereo, stereo, called stereo, with 
those two of them actually had observing their son is effectively something able to do go at a very high special angle and you see the region they're talking about and to us just a brief time period of time there's no blind spot we have no ever seen the earth that uh, may, earth may not may not be hidden and not have a twin twin but scientists believe that ancient silicon earth responsible for the largest and most familiar world in the night sky this is not there's no uh, twin of earth in orbit today but you know four four and a half billion years ago a town would have been different I and mean, then was a result of collision a star smashed out between two worlds or planet another world about the size of mars which did where did the rock the size of ours come from? It was an orbit around the sun, the same orbit as Earth, and sunny and partners get a little too close, and there's a collision that resulted in what we see in the sky every night. When scientists explain data from their far away systems more closely, realize that planets don't exist, quite exist, especially the same orbit, but the concept still remains possible. So far, we have no examples of two planets showing an orbit. But under the right circumstances, there's nothing to say they can't. So long as we keep searching, perhaps one day we will. Astronauts aboard the IS... Witness pillars of fire exploding high above the earth. They're too high for natural lights or from the ground. It almost like the atmosphere is on fire. Could the earth be under attack? In August 2015, a crew aboard the ISS were looking down the earth for 149 miles below him. You can see the different nature, nat- natural, you know, beauties of the rainforest. The forests, mountains, streets, oceans, things like that. Every part of the earth, whether it's day or night, is interesting. By mission, the team catches a starting image. When the photos are received here on earth, people notice there's some really strange streaks, pillars of fire, branching up. It's almost as if we like we're under attack. Like our atmosphere's on fire, with the red, blood red colour. It's actually, it's actually kind of creepy. They can look very strange. They look alien. But I can't think of anything else of a scene in the atmosphere could be comparable to what this looks like. What are they? We don't know. And that's how it's, these pictures of this mysteriously coloured lights photographed from its IAS. And this is called global. The glowing red light seems to be radiated in energy from a much larger area with intense white light. It looks like some weird force. It's only strange and alien, but it could have an earthly origin. In 2012, amateur astrologers in Texas actually planned an experiment to contact the space station using a one laser. It could be possible, it would be possible to indicate something that, something to the IIS. Of course, someone were to shine powerful enough laser, you might be able to see it. Although the shortages were successful, signaling the IS required sophisticated equipment and coordination on both sides. The resident research has used a very, really powerful one watt laser. It would be possible to indicate something up to the IRS. Of course, if someone were to shine a powerful Earth laser, you might be able to see it. Those astronauts were successful. Germans were successful. Seeing the IRS requires significant equipment and combination, coordination of both sides. Searchers use a really powerful one watt laser. Most of the red dot lasers you're familiar with are a fraction of that power. It's actually really difficult to signal the IRS with a laser. This shape, form, and intensity, the high altitude light, display, 
Makes a laser explanation seem unlikely. These approaching red lights right seem high in the atmosphere, a very organic shape. They are very powerful. They are not weak lights. They are very powerful flashes. They don't look like laser beam. It is clearly has something else. Could the location and time of the year be a key to solving the mystery? At near the time of carnival, they are filmed near Mexico. Lights kind of look like the shape of fireworks. And many fireworks are red. But some people speculate it could be a fireworks show. But when the photos are Chris reference from the timing of the carnival, fireworks really fizzles out. Carnival's still six months away. Fortunately, fireworks, astronauts can't see them. It is, it's just too low in the atmosphere. They're just too dim. They're too small. Your lights are way too big. They're able to too, and way too high for natural lights on the ground. The lights aren't, aren't coming from Earth. Experts could now consider it is related to objects from outer space. Some might argue that these massive light, this massive light could have been a meteorite or asteroid or the matter of, of that matter of comet. Earth is hit by tons and tons of space rocks every day. They come in from outer space. They burn out on the atmosphere most of the time. They create fireballs, sometimes they create objects like called boroids. Boroid is even bigger, is when a large enough meteorite actually explodes and it goes off, gives off flashes of light. When a boat ray enters the Earth's atmosphere, it disintegrates an entry, leaving fiery streaks across the sky. In 2013, a boat light exploded over Tristebeck, Russia, creating a flash of light bright in the sun, seen for hundreds of miles. But if the fiery periods of boat lights, NASA would have seen them coming. NASA is what we call the Near Earth Object Program, but they can detect the catalogue. Only the things that have been discovered. Occasions that was objects we do not see. Nothing is forecast to hit at the time the lights are seen. A color of the lights of Mexico makes a body very unlikely. These lights are crimson red. Meteors are all usually bright blue, white, green, maybe never usually red. When the atmospheric scientists view the science, view those images, they realize the astronauts Unique vantage point is the key to their strange phenomena. Astronauts on the International Space Station, completely different perspective, what they've seen, they're because they are on a high altitude. It means that these astronauts' position by the atmosphere has granted them privileged access, enabling them to photograph unusual meteorological events. It's rarely seen below, explosion of red spikes. Red spikes are basically what we call reverse of positive lighting. Lightning, neg- neg- nitrogen atoms are getting sighted over massive thunderclouds. It's sort of like lightning, except going down, they go up. They happen to be very high up the atmosphere, plus they happen very, very quickly, just a microsecond. They have more of a discharge of electrical de- energy before above a lightning storm. Storm they very different to observe red spirit rights. The ground simply because of the clouds, the thunderstorm usually hide them. Now we are, uh, have natural so no bit. They get a picture from above. It's a credible stroke of luck for NASA. Astronauts were in the right place at the right time for the capture of red sprites on film from space. These photos have been, will be vital to gaining better understanding. Extraordinary atmospheric event. Sprites are very, very rare. They're very recently discovered. So there is a lot we don't know about them. I'm sure there's more we can learn. And more time we spend in space of uprooting Earth, the more strange phenomena we are going to see. Seven removed, the very, we're going to see.